welcome to today's episode of the Balanced Approach Podcast. I'm your host, Lou Padian. I hope that you're doing well and are enjoying the podcast and the topics we've covered so far. These podcasts are released every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to subscribe wherever you are listening to be kept up to date. So today is one of the ones that somebody asked me about a while ago, and actually I've been meaning to do because often it's something that can really help a lot of people. So for you, those of you who don't know, yes, I'm an online coach, health coach in the NHS, nutritionist by trade, but also I'm a personal trainer, worked in gyms for a couple of years, really enjoyed it, and a big part of that was doing inductions and helping people who were completely new or unsure in the gym understand what they should be doing or what they can do and how to do it correctly. And this is why I thought this episode would be really useful, followed by the next episode, which will give you a structured plan. But in order to do that, I think it's really important to discuss the six gym moves that you need to know in the gym. And they're not six individual exercises that are going to help you burn belly fat or anything like that, but it's helping you understand how the body works in a really simple way and how to get the most out of your gym session. So when we look at different movements in the gym, and I'm not talking about cardiovascular exercise because that's slightly different. When we're talking about resistance training and strength exercises or even home workouts, there's technically six different types of movement. And we're going to discuss them now because this is really useful for people to understand. Say, for example, you turn up the gym, you've got your gym plan there and it says, right, you're going to do leg press. Somebody's on the leg press and that's the only one in the gym and it looks like they're going to be there for ages and there's a bit of a queue forming and you're going, right, I don't know what to do now. Actually, if we understand what type of movement that is, we can actually look at other movements and exercises. Or, for example, you've got a gym plan, you're due to get a session in, but you actually haven't got time for it and you have to try and figure out a home workout. Again, these different types of movement patterns will help you group these exercises and understand what muscles they work and what are good options to swap them in. So... The six of them overall, I'm going to quickly whiz through them and hopefully by the end of this podcast you'll understand the different types of movements and then next episode we'll discuss how to put it all together into a gym plan. So first of all we've got squat. You've probably seen bodyweight squats, you've probably seen barbell squats where someone's got a bar on the back or someone's got holding a weight and what we call sort of like a goblet squat holding in front of them they're squatting down. And this is just when the movement that people probably do day to day is just sitting down on a chair. When you're lowering yourself and standing back up afterwards from a chair, that is a squat. So there's lots of different movements that be associated or fit into this category, but it's a really great one for lower body, it can be a core exercise as well. And it's split into mainly the main popular ones are probably leg press and squats. So when you're sitting on a machine on the gym and you're pushing your legs against a platform, either you're moving or the platform's moving and you're extending your legs and then flexing them again or bending at the knee again at the hip, that's a squat pattern. Other ones that you might have seen, step-ups, lunges, they're ones that are commonly also squat patterns, we'd call them. And there's different ways to do them. So you might have a barbell over your head, so a bar or a weight over your head, and you're doing a lunge. That's a different type of lunge to whether you're doing a really narrow one or stepping up onto a platform. They're all slight variations, but they all work the same groups, muscle groups, which are mainly your quadriceps, the big muscles on the front of your legs at the top, and your glutes, which is your bum. So that's a really popular movement that you've seen in the gym. So hopefully with a few different options there, so squats and leg presses, got lunges and step-ups, they're probably the ones that I'd say are the most popular ones that you can, there's lots of variations in there, but they're usually grouped together into the squat pattern. Next up, which is the other lower body movement that you might see, which is called a hinge pattern. So like in a squat, we might sit down on a chair and stand up or go down to a squat and stand up. The hinge pattern is just the bending over at the hips. So this is when, imagine you're trying to pick someone up heavy off the floor. You might have a slight bend in your knees, pardon me, but you stick your bum back, your back comes flat in line with the floor, pick someone up off the floor, and then you put, squeeze your bum muscles and it pulls your hips back to the front where you're standing upright. That is a hip hinge pattern. So this usually targets the hamstrings, the glutes, and the core again. So you see the glutes work in both patterns just because that flexion at the hip or we're bending at the hip. When we're bending at the hip, we're extending our glutes, so that muscle's stretching. And then when we're standing back upright again, or pulling our hips forward, we're flexing that muscle, contracting that muscle, and it's pulling our hips to sort of parallel or flat again. So and that's what we're trying to work here, which is the hip hinge movement. So common ones that you might see, your deadlift, you might see a glute bridge as well, kettlebell swings, hip thrusts. Those sort of movements can be interchangeable. There's lots of different variations you can do. So you can do them with barbells, which is a big flat 20 kilo bar. 
there might be 10 or 15 kilos in some gyms you can do them with a kettlebell you can do them with a dumbbell you can do them at home with body weight you can find weights or things to put on your hips or bend over and hold you can have the weight on your back which is more of a good morning we might say lots of different variations in this but they're all coming to the same group which is a hip hinge which works your hamstrings your glutes and probably some core in there as well the next two as we move into the upper body and this is what you call your push and pull patterns so push patterns is what you say is pushing something with your arms. So if you think about when you're getting up off the floor and you've got your hands near your chest and then you extend your arms and pushing away, you feel it working across your chest, which is your pectorials. You might feel it working your shoulders if you're holding that position for a while. So again, top of the arm there. And your triceps, which is the back of your arm where there's the little bulge there down from the shoulder before you get to your elbow on the back, they'll work in the pushing pattern. When we think of pushing patterns, we might think of, well, there's two technical subcategories in this. You've got vertical and horizontal sort of push patterns. So your vertical will be pushing stuff overhead, like shoulder press. You might be getting a kettlebell and like sort of punching it up into the air. So almost like your clean and press movement, that would be sort of a vertical push. And you've got your horizontal push, which is like your bench press and your push-ups. Different ways to do it. Again, dips might come in there as well, or body weight dips, but it's working the same muscle groups mainly. Different exercises work them slightly different or different muscle might be working more than the other but overall it's your chest your shoulders and your triceps and after that we've got your pull movement so like we said we can push things we can also pull things and again we've got vertical and horizontal so if you think about your vertical that'd be sort of your lat pull down which is one of the most popular machines or pull-ups um or you might have a horizontal pull which would be like your rows where you've got a seated cable row machine maybe you might have dumbbells, you might have a barbell, but it's anything that you're pulling towards you. The muscles that work in this would be the front of your arm. So like we said, on the push movement, you've got your triceps at the back of your arm down from your shoulder. Biceps will be on the front of your arm and that'll be working in the pulling movement. But also we've got your back as well. So back and biceps work together. And another group that works in this usually because you're holding onto something and you're anchoring yourself. So if you're holding a dumbbell, you might be holding your body weight on a TRX, you might be doing a pull-up your forearms will be working as well to work on that grip. So all these exercises work your back, your biceps and your forearms. And again, interchangeable to an extent with vertical and horizontal, but lots of different variations you can put in there. And again, just hopefully opens up your mind and understands that if you turn up at the gym and the lat pull down is busy, actually, you know what? Similar sort of movement might be a single arm dumbbell row, might be a cable seat cable row those sort of things are really good to know so when you turn up to the gym you don't feel paralyzed and actually think well i'll just go home because that bit of equipment is not available have to be flexible and when we're going there because obviously there's limited equipment available but also understanding that actually there's some body weight versions that we can do when we're looking at body weight movements uh, pull exercises tend to be harder to stimulate at home and um, hinge exercises tend to be a little bit as well but mainly pull because pushing, we can use our body weight to sort of push on the floor, doing a push up on the stairs. Um, we might get something to do a shoulder press over hand, overhead, but actually doing a pull up variation at home, there's very limited ways that we can do that or sort of mimic that. There's some pulling movements that we can do with some bands and stuff. And um, there's a great one with like a towel overhead where you sort of creating that tension as well. But pull exercises tend to sort of get a lot more benefits from the gym setting because there's a lot more ways to work those muscle groups together those back biceps and forearms number five on the list is your core and you might have heard of your core before uh, that's a nice little rhyme there but it's that sort of a big belt around your belly or think of like a corset and it goes all the way around the sides technically around the back as well and around the midsection with a lot of these movements as well there'll be similar patterns that you might see where you might see someone do a single arm uh, pull down on a cable you might see a lap pull down in a row and they all look quite similar but they're also quite different movements in the way that the, the weight is and where it's moved um, but technically those muscle groups a lot of them will only sort of do one job which is they might that joint might only flex in a certain way might rotate slightly cause slightly different because there's lots of different ways to stimulate it there's the flexion element there's a isometric there's a twist element in there as well so actually there's lots of different movements that come into the core group Common ones that you might know of are planks and side planks, um, dead bugs on the floor, which if you don't know about that, it's when you lie on your back, you've got your arms and legs, your knees bent, your arms in the air, and then you slowly extend opposite arm, opposite leg to the floor, trying to keep that midsection engaged. Bird dogs, very similar, but again, it's dead bug on your hands and knees, or 
a dead bug is your bird dog on your back. And then you've got things like Russian twists in there, you've got sit-ups. These all sort of come under your core and there's probably variations that you need to include in your training around, yes, the isometric holes like your planks and side planks, but we might want to do a hip like lift in there and drop down on your side planks or if you're doing your planks you might do like rotating touches where you're sort of leaning down each side of your hips just to get some other stimulus in there because like I said the core is quite diverse in the way that it works and we make sure that we're strong through all these different movements there's no point in just being really strong in a sitter which is a flexion movement when actually that's not really working our obliques which is the side of our core it's not really working on any sort of lateral rotation or isometric holds so again, there's different ways that we'd work our core throughout this, throughout a gym session or throughout a gym program. Last but not least, and this is sort of the, what doesn't fit in the other five categories fits in here. And that's what we'd probably call isolation exercises. So if we're thinking about specific muscle groups in there, yes, a pull movement might be a single arm row or a cable row where we're sat down and we're pulling the handles towards our sort of sternum or our chest, really squeezing in there. But if we're looking to work the biceps by themselves, we might do something like a bicep curl. If we're looking to work our triceps by ourselves, we might do a tricep extension in there. And these work more individual muscle groups. That's why I call it isometric, because it's almost isolating a single muscle group. As you notice in the past five exercises, it works two or three different muscle groups together across all these different movements within them. So like a, a pull-up will work your back, your biceps, and your forearms. A single arm row will work your back, your biceps, and your forearms. But if we're looking just to work our back, we might do a reverse fly in there, which sort of brings into your shoulders, but doesn't work our biceps at all. And this is where the isometric comes in. So probably you might see in a typical gym layout, which is something that I recommend, where you'd have all your compound movements, where you've got multiple muscle groups getting work. So you've got your push, you pull all your legs together, all these sort of squats, pushes, uh, bench presses and pull-ups. You might have some core in there as well. But if there's an area that's sort of limiting you, so if you find that, biceps might need a bit of work or your hamstrings might need a little bit of work or your calves for example you might go right and do some calf raises i might do some quad extensions or leg extensions I might do some bicep curls and these sort of fit into your isolation groups the reason that we talk about all these different groups as well is because we want to make sure that we're hitting all the groups throughout the week if we're just doing upper body if we're just doing push and pull and we're doing that three times a week we're going push monday pull tuesday push wednesday pull thursday push Friday, pull Saturday. Hopefully I've hit, got that in the right order there. We're not really hitting any lower body in there. Our glutes, our hamstrings, and our quads, and our calves aren't really getting much work. Our core probably won't get much work in there either, which means that actually we might limit our gains on upper body because our other, body, other parts of our body are lagging behind. Um, and it also means things like our lower body, if they do what we get with sort of detraining, if you're not doing any training on a certain body part, when you start back again, it can be really sore, it can be really weak, it might not be able to handle much volume in your sessions, might not be able to do much, it might take a while to recover, and that can really hinder progress elsewhere. So trying to hit all these muscle groups throughout the week, hitting them two, three times maybe across all your sessions across the week, making sure we're giving it time to recover in between sessions, is a really good important thing we'll discuss in the next episode. But I thought it was really important, first of all, to discuss the six different movement patterns or the groups that we might put them in. So the squat, the hinge, the push, the pull, you've got core, and then last but not least, isolation exercises. So there you have it. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode of the Balanced Approach podcast. If you have any questions, queries, or would like to reach out to me, please do. I am at Louis Pady in Nutrition, which is at L O U I S. P-A-D-I-A-N Nutrition on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok and all other social media platforms. If you're looking for support in achieving your goals and living a healthier, happier and more balanced life in the process, click the link below and inquire about working with me. Remember to subscribe to the Balanced Approach podcast wherever you're listening for more insightful episodes and I look forward to speaking to you soon.